Good day everyone, a very warm welcome to you. My name is Nick and you, you might be watching these videos in a row or you might have just clicked on this one individually. But it's the time where we do a summary of games covered so far. Bit of a milestone this one. Uh, Commodore Amiga of course, it just so happens we've got up to 500 uh, games. Hooray! So let's do a, a summary then. So I'll talk you through uh, short clips of the last 50. So it's games reviewed on the Commodore Amiga on the channel 451 through to 500. And we start with Tetris Pro. It's a Tetris variant, but I guess you knew that. It's got a few um, upgrades on this. The colours are a bit limited. There's one of the upgrades here. It flips upside down, which isn't very uh, beneficial. It's a little bit dull. And it does start off a little bit slow. So you've got to stay with it for a while. But, um, you know, it was a commercial release. If you like puzzle games, you might like uh, this one. But um, it's not. it's got all the Tetris shapes there. It just hasn't got many uh, colours and variants compared to some of the other Tetris clones that are about. Uh, uh, this is Frontier Elite 2, one of my favourite games on the Commodore Amiga, I have to say, back in the day. It's a space adventure, uh, you can work for the Federation or the Empire, uh, gradually going up the ranks, upgrade your ship, you can be, um, well, you can mine uh, asteroids, just make loads of money and drive around the galaxy, or fly, I should say, driving wouldn't be any good. But um, you, yeah, you go around the galaxy there, exploring new planets and worlds and, and having dogfights, it's a really, really cool game. Frontier Elite 2. Kingpin bowling, not quite so good. It's hard to represent bowling on the um, Amiga or any system, really. Uh, Tekken Bowl on the PlayStation 3 wasn't too bad. But anyway, this one is, um, yes, it's a little bit dull again, but it's bowling. Uh, line up the um, uh, the pins there where you want to throw the bowl and hit it. It's probably the best bowling game on the Amiga, and that says it. It's got a few sound bites. It's all right. If you like bowling, or say a few minutes, it's good to uh, do it. But I would prefer to go out with mates and go proper bowling uh, somewhere. So do that if you can. Apache is a horizontal scroller from Team 17. I think it was given away on um, side, well, it was a freebie with Body Blows or one of those compilations there. It's alright for a freebie. Uh, collect um, stranded men or women, well, they're, they're jumping up and down anyway, it must be a bit hot, and take them back to base without getting killed. Lots of different levels, good parallax scrolling here, and the graphics are absolutely gorgeous and the sounds are wholesome and nice. So I like this game, although I'd never heard of it back in the day, so track that down. Apache. Then we come to Zyconics, it's another sort of like Clax sort of Tetris variant with annoying music. Um, you've got to get three in a row, and um, yeah, again the progression of this is very, very slow because the screen is so, so big. You'd have to be playing like a nincompoop to lose at this game quickly, so maybe it's a stress buster to take your mind away from stuff if you've got a lot of going on, but you, any goes on this will be lasting absolutely ages, three colours in a row, horizontal, diagonally or vertically, and then you're good. Try and get bonus points there. Strikes and spares, not as good as kingpin bowling, and that's saying something. Uh, again, line the stuff up. It's a bit harder to line up. We've got no uh, guy here, and it's quite easy to make the ball go in a funny direction. This is a bit like me when I normally go bowling. Uh, the ball goes really, really slow. But I've been, I've been working on the weights, and next time I'll probably smash them all like that scene in Superman 3 when he blows his nose and it goes to a million miles an hour and then he'll get smashed to smithereens. Anyway, strikes and spares, I'd avoid that one if you can. Uh, do try Kingpin instead. Moose Drive, this was a, a public domain game. Thunderbirds, uh, go. No, it's Moose Drive. I don't think the game was ever completed commercially, but it's starting off okay. It's one of these top-down driving games. Yes, the Amiga's a lot more powerful than this when you compare it to other sort of games like uh, Ivan Stewart's Iron Man Super Off-Car Racer thing. But, you know, I would like more tracks, but this version I've got is just the same track over and over and over again. Um, Moose Drive. I don't know why it's kind of called Moose Drive, but anyway, it's got the basis of a good game. Psycho Santa. That's a Christmassy based game, you might have noticed by Santa here. Get the snowballs and hit the houses and then get the uh, presents as well. It's not a great deal to it. It was a fun game to review at uh, Christmas, as I tend to do each time I try and pick a few. Well done, prepare for bonus level. Well, we will do it. It's a bit of fun. I wouldn't buy any serious money for it. I think it might have been given away as a cover disc as well. Lots of mad mini games. Here I am on a pogo stick trying to get up the tree to get uh, presents. Bully Sporting Darts, it's one of those ones a bit like. 180 and a wacky darts but it's very hard to aim this one it's probably the lesser of the ones I would say uh, 
yeah, darts get to a zero and that's that. I haven't played darts at the pub for quite some time. Whoops, I don't know if uh, they, they still do darts or it's a health and safety thing. But this is okay, I suppose, without being spectacular, based on the TV series loosely, uh, Bullseye, but you haven't got the question element, so it falls down uh, there. Uh, Chase, you're in space. There's vectors going about. You might not have heard about uh, this one. But anyway, you've got to shoot enemies in this asteroid storm in blue. If you do that, then it goes to the next stage where they're a little bit more uh, dangerous and there's a few more things uh, to do. It's interesting, uh, but, um, you know, it's like a precursor, I suppose, to Frontier Elite 2. If you like this, uh, because there's a mini game, this in Frontier Elite 2. But anyway, if you like this, you'd love Frontier Elite 2. Go with this one. But this is this is good to spend a bit of time with and um, try and get your reflexes. Future Shock. It's an Atari ST conversion, this one. And quite often with Atari ST conversions, the graphics are a little bit uh, dark. Anyway, you're in this ship going around trying to collect objects to get to the next uh, world. This first world is like a, well, prehistoric uh, world. There's lots of stuff to kill you. The music is on par with Psygnosis, although it isn't by uh, uh, Psygnosis. Could do with being a bit brighter. I didn't mind the thing. I would have played it a little bit back in the day as a kid. Future Shock has got a good name to it as well. A reflexity pinball. Now, you know, when you think of pinball games, you're thinking of like um, pinball dreams and all those ones, pinball fantasies. This one is very, very uh, basic. It feels a bit like an 8 bit game rather than a 16 bit one. But if you want an extra bit of pinball challenge, then uh, here you go. A little bit of space. This, this is supposed to be based on aliens, this table, but it's not a very strong theme. It looks like someone's knocked this up in their spare time rather than, rather than being a proper release. So, pinball challenge. There's a few of these you might not have heard of as we go through the collection. Collection. A gauntlet free. Now the original gauntlet uh, was top down in the arcades. This time they've tried to make it 3D. We reviewed this game on ZX Spectrum as well. Does it work well? It doesn't feel like gauntlet to be honest with you. But it gives you an extra dimension and it's good to see. The idea is the same. Uh, kill these ghosts, collect keys, go through doors and escape. So you know, uh, gauntlet free, the final uh, quest. I prefer top down, it won't be that. But it's good that it took it in at least a try to go in a different direction in this one. A uh, dough man. Now, it's a bit like a golden axis, but with a lot more gore to it. A bit of hacking and slashing, getting different weapons. It's all in Polish, but it plays good. I played this due to a recommendation. I'm not sure it was available in the UK back in the day. But yes, if you like your gore up to um, a super strength, then this is it. There'll be blood and guts everywhere. Hooray, dough man. Not to get confused with um, Spider-Man or Superman or the Milkman. This guy's got lots of muscles. It, 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 it passes this game. Uh, good weather conditions are too. I got a fair distance. Uh, Narco Police. Now, people rave about this game back in the day. I find it a little bit uh, drippy. But anyway, you're in the future, and you've got to stop the flow of drugs for these various drug cartels by running through these um, uh, alleyways, uh, underground alleyways, and shooting people. You can select weapons, call for backup, and all that sort of stuff. You've got a team of people in different tunnels. But I, I found the playability hard going, but no doubt, if you learn to use that computer on the right properly, there's a bit of play there. Narco Police. Black Lamp, it's a, um, well, a platform platformer shooter thing um, again well, a few bad games in here again again what ruins it is is the enemies just keep regenerating the whole time it looks okay for an early uh, Amiga game but um, you'll be swearing and saying all sorts of uh, uh, words as things keep shooting you for nowhere you think you've shot all the enemy then another one will uh, turn up but essentially you need to collect a load of keys put them back into a case uh, to break some sort of curse uh, somewhere I'm a big fan of the bubble games this one is bubble Dizzy. Uh, as a mini game goes, it's probably my favourite of the uh, Dizzy games. Essentially, you're at the bottom of the ocean and you must get to the top by uh, jumping on these bubbles. They will pop every now and again as you've got to uh, jump about. Uh, you've been put here by some crazy pirate fellow. So when you get to the top, like this, uh, almost, uh, then you go to the next screen and there's more things to kill you. I think you must keep falling to the bottom of the ocean. It's, it's, a, it's a step up from the 8-bit versions, which is nice to see. Uh, Championship Manager 93. Now, this is the Thing that almost caused me to um, fail all my college courses back in the day. A very addictive uh, game. It's football management, a bit like a spreadsheet. You buy your players, transfer market, find them, train them, get your formation, do substitutions. There's Eric Cantona from Man United, but he missed the nincompoop. Anyway, there's Man United versus Plymouth, and I could actually, I, I, 
actually played this for seasons and seasons and seasons. Whole weeks turned into hours and sometimes I forgot to eat. But that's the nature of these games. Uh, Sky High Stuntman, a very tricky vertical scroller shooter. Uh, very different from the uh, the Spectrum uh, version, which uh, used a stuntman trying to film bits for a film. This one seems to abandon that and just says, let's have a vertical scroller shooter. Now, it holds together quite well. I always find these games a little bit difficult. I prefer a Swiv uh, there to uh, this one, but, you know... Uh, Fans of the genre will quite like this. I wouldn't mind it scrolling ever so slightly uh, left or right, but it doesn't do. So it stays fixed in the middle there with the actual play area, but it's acceptable. Uh, Pro Powerboat Simulator. This came out on the ZX Spectrum as well. Again, a bit basic looking, but uh, good fun. Puts me in mind a little bit of Spy Hunter when you go into the, in the Spectrum where you go through the, the, the sea things. But essentially, you need to get to the end of the level in your Powerboat. There's a choice of one or two. Collect more fuel as you go along and just avoid all the obstacles and shoot all the bad guys. Don't crash into any of the scenery. It's a bit like River Raid, I suppose, but on the water as opposed to flying over it. Avoid that helicopter, baby. Uh, the Carl Lewis Challenge, this is absolutely terrible. Uh, it boasted a photo realism. I suppose it's got that a little bit in the animations. That would have been back in the day. Uh, it's like either waggling the joystick, which I won't do because I don't want to break my joystick or hitting the keys, but I found it hard to get any speed up here. Uh, it doesn't carry the same excitement as Daily Thomas Decathlon from the 8-bit Zillic Spectrum era, but it's good graphics of Carl Lewis. Uh, you select your athlete from uh, different countries, but they always look a bit like Carl Lewis, as not exactly like him, so a little bit flawed. Uh, Wings of Fury, this is really, really liked back in the day. I know you come across it quite recently. Uh, you take off from an aircraft carrier, you then get to a, a, a land of enemies, and you have to bomb the hell out of them, and then get back to your ship and survive. If you do that, you get to the next stage. You see there's a map there in the bottom middle that says where we're going, as we're going over the ocean, so you can shoot and uh, bomb. Now it takes a little bit of uh, practice to actually control your actual uh, plane there and it's easy to crash into the scenery when you're not quite used to it. Wild Streets, it's a vertical scroller beat em up and it's very very poor indeed. You can see on the left hand of the screen the graphics are tearing up a bit. This happened on a few versions of it but not all of it. Uh, but anyway you've got limited amount of bullets, you've got to smash your way if you can be bothered uh, to some sort of place. That panther's there to help you believe it or not but he, he, he sometimes he's bothered, sometimes he's not. There he is leaping on a guy. Up yours, he says to him. Right, good. Uh, good backgrounds on this. That's the best you can pretty much say of this. Um, now we're into public domain territory. Willy's Weirdy Nightmare. You know this is based loosely on Jet Set Willy and Manic Miner. And it goes. It doesn't try to do anything crazy with the graphics. It tries to represent them accurately. I've got music going on here. Um, same sort of thing. Uh, collect your objects. And, you know, it plays homage to those earlier games really, really well. So try and track this one down if you can do. Willy's Weirdy Nightmare. Uh, a real nice game. Quite a lot of rooms. It's bigger than the original game. So I don't think you'll be completing this. But I don't think you would have completed the original game anyway. Plenty of picks. This was given out on a cover disc. And I played this quite a lot back in the day. Basically, you select playing cards. Uh, you can't see what they are. And there's an event uh, uh, behind each one. You take it in turns, you and the computer, or you and a, another person. There will either be goals, or penalties, or a half time, or red cards, or yellow cards there. But it's really random where stuff is. At the start, it might show you randomly where two or three of the items are, depending on your skill uh, factor you select. There's a lot of goals in this game. Uh, Quack, this is by Team17. A fairly a gentle um, uh, platformer puzzler game. Collect all the fruit and get the keys to get to the exit there, which you see by the uh, inn. Uh, you don't have to collect all the fruit, I don't suppose, but um, you know, extra points are done so if you do. This Quacker is Quackers. It's for one to two players. Nice gentle game. You can always trust Team17 to come up with something pretty good uh, quality uh, there. I prefer their driving games, but this is pretty good as well as I go in there. Motorhead. Now, the only beat of I know based on a band, this one's based on the band Motorhead, you control uh, Lemmy, the ace of spades fame, as he goes round. Very, very funny. Very uh, inventive um, levels and minigames bet uh, be be between them. Here we are on a motorbike going back and forward. I found this a whole heap of fun. Didn't hear about this back in the day, so not quite sure how much praise it's got, but it, it's really good and stand out in a game in its own right, even if it didn't have uh, the Motorhead license. Brilliant Motorhead. Excellent game.
Axel's Magic Hammer. Uh, I didn't get on this one uh, too much. It's a uh, well, I think influenced by the uh, the, the, the Axel uh, games on the uh, the Mega Drive and the Master System. Um, well, I have to compare these games to ones like uh, the Great Gina Sisters, and it's not as fun as that. The music isn't really um, happening. But again, it would have the people that liked it uh, back in the day. Nostalgia plays a huge, huge part. So if you had it as a kid back in the day, nothing else, you would have had a lot of fond memories from this one. But as an adult going back, I just see that it's interesting. But there's much better games available. Uh, Pegasus. Now this game is divided into uh, two sort of like types of gameplay. One you're on this Pegasus horse uh, flying around shooting in a stand and beat him up and the other one you're on the ground with a big sword uh, chopping everyone that you possibly can. Uh, Parallax Scrolling again. It sure looks nice. Uh, fans of the genre again will be pleased with this one. It's a good one. I think it's very uh, underrated this game. I, I did like the sounds coming off the thing as well. Really good. Pegasus. Check that one out. Uh, MiG-20 29 Soviet fighter. Uh, yeah, um, you know, it's uh, one of those games. Chase few uh, aircraft firing and um, uh, shooting there. A bit like uh, the, in the in the vein of Afterburner. Um, uh, I find it a little bit difficult, but I might not have been playing it quite uh, properly um, uh, there, but it, it, it seemed that like it was a bit random your success as you went through. I do prefer Afterburner on the Amiga, although that wasn't a brilliant pull, um, to uh, say the uh, least. But it did add a sequel uh, to uh, P47 Thunderbolt, another horizontal scroller shooter. Starts off quite gentle as well, so if you find horizontal scrollers pretty tricky, then this might be one for you. The one thing that is pretty tricky, though, is the um, ender level boss, which is this big vehicle coming along here. It does seem to take a lot of pounding to actually destroy him but I've since been told you get really really low down and just fire the bombs as much as you can on repeat uh, then it's a lot easier. You collect your upgrades as you go through, but if you lose life, you lose your upgrades, so that's pretty uh, tricky. Pro Boxing Simulator, not as good as Panzer Kick uh, Boxing, and the guys look a little bit like they want to go to the toilet the whole time. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a bit random, your success on this one, but again, back in the day, you might have enjoyed it. Uh, what's bad is the, uh, well, let's down a little bit, which could have made it a bit better, is the, um, the energy bar of your opponent gradually goes back up again, and that's infuriating if you get quite low to the energy bar, and it's the end of the round. But good ambience on it. Uh, good sounds. Um, you can do foul um, uh, punches when the ref's not looking. Uh, driving force. It's very slippery. Obviously um, influenced by power drive. Music is really, really great. Uh, choice of vehicles as you go uh, through. Different environments uh, there. Much, much better than the Amiga version of power drive uh, uh, there. But what lets it down a little bit is the slipperiness of the controls. You do have to be a bit precise. You can get used to it once you try it a little bit. It feels like you're controlling it evil, like with a, with a, with a mouse rather than driving a, a car, but so, so slippery, but there's a good game in there somewhere. Indianapolis 500, uh, this was a big favourite of a lot of people back in the day. I played it quite a bit to Formula 1 Grand Prix come along. It's the oval for the famous Indy 500 uh, race. Uh, you select either one of three cars, and that's your different difficulty, but you really need to be an expert on this in setting up the car, so do your practice, get the speed, uh, get your, your turning your gears ratio sorted out, but on the hardest level, any touch with the side and your dead and if you're going up to 500 laps or whatever and uh, uh, and then you crash on 500 you're not happy. Uh, Blazing Thunder probably the best uh, conversion I've seen of this uh, particular uh, game. A sizeable tank you're driving uh, uh, around here blasting everything for all your worth. Quite a fun game. It's in the vein like a run and gun of Commando this time you're in a massive tank. You can't get out the tank. Sometimes it looks like a dress. My one complaint is the tank sometimes a bit too big uh, for the screen. Maybe that have been slightly smaller. Other versions they are uh, slightly uh, smaller. The first game called Warzone, there's two called Warzone in this one. This is the most basic of the two, but it's, it's a constantly scrolling uh, game. It's all about surviving. If the um, the screen catches up with your car, you get blocked, then you're going to die. If you bump into any of the enemies, you're going to die as well. Yeah, there's upgrades you can fire and shoot. Uh, always get fuel and keep uh, uh, going. But it's a survive map. That's quite basic uh, by a Paradox here. Another early game, but it would have been good to have if you just got your Amiga back in the day. Better was to come. Defenders of the Earth. You play Flash Gordon. Apparently this is based on a cartoon. They put a load of uh, uh, superheroes uh, together. 
together. You've got to blast your way through this castle of Ming the Merciless uh, to rescue your princess or escape or do something. But you get the general um, idea. It's one of the also rans. It's not terrible, but it's not super brilliant either. But uh, keep throwing for all you're worth. You can call on your hero to help to get through doors and do various other stuff. Then they disappear somewhere else, maybe going to dinner or something. Second game called Warzone. This is my favourite of the two uh, by Core. Uh, this is a quality run and gun. It put me in um, uh, mind a little bit of a um, another game uh, there. Chaos Engine, I remembered. Well done, Nick. No script on this, by the way. As I go forward, looking a little bit like Duke Nukem, fire along, getting the power-ups as well. So if you're looking for a decent um, a run and gun, then Warzone by Core Design is the one for you. Not Warzone, that one by Paradox, which I made the mistake first of all. Alamatron uh, 2112, uh, obviously influenced uh, uh, from the um, arcade, Smash It TV and the like. Uh, this is pretty good, great, great sounds on this, and it's a whole heap of fun on the Commodore Amiga. I highly, highly recommend uh, this game. One of the highlights in the 50, I, 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 I would say, because there's a lot of average games now. A few good ones in there, including Frontier Elite 2, but Alamatron 2112 is awesome too. Great sound and lots of humour in there as well. A marvellous game, a marvellous game. Where Time Stood Still, this is another game that's imported from the Atari ST. Uh, could have been a lot more colour in here. When I look at the um, ZX Spectrum uh, version, uh, that was... Uh that was, didn't play uh, too dissimilar to this, but anyway, you've crash landed in this time that uh, land that times have got, and you've got to guide your party um, to safety somehow. Uh, you can pick up items and objects and stuff, although this version I struggled to do that, uh, but uh, that is the idea. Just escape, a little bit dull for me, anyway. Uh, Motor Massacre, this is interesting, it's like two styles of gameplay, one you're in this, like, uh, the buildings you're investigating, a bit like an early Grand, Grand Theft Auto I suppose, collecting objects and then you get out of here and then you're getting into your car, you start in the car really, uh, going round, you've got to go through three cities, uh, collecting everything you can, shooting people uh, and then attacking the, the main uh, nasty person at the end. As you can guess, it's a post-apocalyptic, as a lot of these games are, disaster. Interesting, hasn't aged particularly uh, well. Power Monger, uh, World War One edition. Now there was a data disc to Power Monger. Uh, I mainly played the original game uh, and not this one so much. I'm really looking forward to this one, but it doesn't really give me the World War feel as much as possible. And the generals are redesigned as, I think, as various um, uh, military people, but the, it just feels medieval again. Uh, instead of killing sheep, you kill deer. Um, when you invent stuff, you um, get um, uh, airplanes and all that sort of stuff, but it's, it doesn't feel like World War One. Uh, Championship Manager Italia plays exactly the same as Championship Manager 93, exactly the same, although you've got different uh, players and competitions when it's based on Syria uh, in Italy. No real reason to own both Championship Manager 93 and Championship Manager uh, Italia, but the Italian leagues was uh, quite popular back in the day in the UK with people, players like Paul Gascoigne and Paul Ince going over there at that sort of time. So you can know you can pick either one or the, the other very time um, stealing game this one. Darkman based on the movies um, starring Liam Neeson as Darkman. You're this guy without a face and he's battling through in this like a uh, 2D uh, 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 one with odd sounds on it to try and well it's like revenge a bit like that film uh, The Grow. Ooh 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 ooh. A, a little bit tricky but anyway fans of the movies which I still haven't seen uh, might like this one. Note to Nick try and make some time to watch a dark man. He's a dark man Yes, here we go. One to two players, I think. Castle Master, an early 3D exploration game. It doesn't move very fast by today's standards, but it's got, got good music going all the way through. I got a little bit annoyed with it eventually, but it's nice and smooth on the uh, mind. Uh, you have to... Um, First get into this castle by opening the drawbridge and playing either as a prince or a princess, you have to go and rescue the other one by going in this castle, uh, solving clues, picking up um, uh, keys and doing all that sort of uh, malarkey. So you sort of like know what to do there. Interesting but a little bit slow. Predator 2, it's a rail shooter. Uh, you control Danny Glover's character from the film but basically shoot everything apart from the innocent people. There's a lot of women there in mode going to bingo or something. But yeah, a bit like Operation Wolf if you're familiar with those sort of games, you must be. But shoot everything, Casey the Predator might turn up and shoot him as well. He's a naughty boy and deserves to be uh, blown up. Why can't he do some other job like chess or Monopoly and leave us all alone? Good luck there, kaboom! Castle Master 2 The Crypt come out the same year as Castle Master, so it must have sold, sold quite well. 
Same sort of thing, but this time you've got to escape from a crypt, opening doors, finding keys, opening chests, and getting through various different traps. There's enemies every now and again that try and kill you. Uh, the screen will be flashing red when you, you know that they are uh, attacking. There's a few keys to master in this one, but it's certainly doable. It moves at a leisurely pace. Uh, you're not you're not time dependent on that one. Castle Master 2. Uh, after the war, uh, very, very dark. I think, again, this is an Atari ST uh, uh, port. Um, uh, fairly average, run-of-the-mill, but not, no worse than any of the other 2D ones we've um, looked at uh, today in this review. Uh, Motorhead was the best one, of course. Again, it's post-apocalyptic. These dogs take a bit of uh, chopping, but you, uh, if you can get past um, the first bit to get to a subway, it then turns a little bit into a, um, a run-and-gun, I believe. There we go. After the war. Let's hope it never happens. Uh, City Defence, a very, very, very uh, early Amiga game based on the arcade cabinet um, uh, Missile Command. Um, the advantage that these games have on the Amiga than any of the 8-bits ones is that you can use a proper mouse rather than keys, and that's what makes the game come to life. It's very, very basic, but it's got some interesting sounds there. If I just bought an Amiga and this come with it, and it was right early days, I wouldn't have been disappointed. It uses the original font the Amiga comes with, so it, it doesn't do anything special, but it represents um, the Missile Command really, really well. Well, so it gives you that. Simon the Sorcerer, probably the most accomplished game in the whole of the uh, the 50 there. In the vein, it's point and click, in the vein of Monkey Island and, and those sort of games. Uh, this is the standard version. I think the um, CD version had Chris Barry voice in it, which would have been absolutely amazing. So I might have to look at that again at some point. Comes over nine discs, clicking objects, take to the right area, talk to the right people, solving the right clues. So this game is, to say, the most accomplished of all of them. But my favourite one is Frontier Elite 2, but there's, there's a few good ones in there, quite a few ropey ones as well. So fantastic. So we've made it to 500 Amiga games. Well done if you've watched them all so thank you very much there if you liked any of the snippets of those games please watch the full reviews of any of them they're there in the Commodore Amiga playlist to get there you click on my username and that takes you to the channel page click on playlists I think reviewed games will be there and well and, and the Amiga playlist as well so huge thanks to the subscribers please subscribe if you haven't already if you got to the end of this video and massive massive thank you as well to the members which without you this channel would not exist there's a join button below if you want to do that but it's not compulsory we're all here to stress bus so all how the next 500 thanks for watching as always i've been nick you've been you until next time take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye 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 e and jenkin